And while you are casting your mind back to gigs you've been to, I am delighted to be joined by the Average White Band's very own Alan Gorry, who's in the Edinburgh studio with me right now. It was tempting to clap along there, Alan. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you can do that if you wish. It's, Thank it's you very right. much. We, I don't yeah. want to embarrass you. I don't want to seem, you know, just too, too keen you when you were. Would I not? All right, okay, Hand there's claps plenty don't of time. Anyway. <laughs> there's, no, there's nothing wrong with applause. There's not, is there? We can all live with that. How are you? Very well, thanks. Good. Glad it's, uh, to be here. it's really, really lovely uh, to speak to you and to see you in person. The last time we spoke for BBC Radio Scotland, uh, you were in the States, where that's, you live a lot of the right. time. And we were looking back at your appearance at the Loch Lomond Rock Festival, which was actually round about this time. It it was the end of May, except it was 1979. Yeah, yeah. And uh, this time, you're here for a chat, but you're also back with exclusive news of something we can all look forward to. Well, yes, we can all look forward to... to uh, what's the right word for it? Not retirement, but to um, ending a long saga, you know? 50-odd <laughs> years of, uh, of doing this and... Um, Hopefully, always at the top level. Yeah. Um, Ani and I, we just made a conscious decision that we're we're going to uh, properly end it next year with um, a really great UK tour, and um, it just seemed fitting to to do it properly while everybody's fit and healthy, mm. and um, you don't want to leave lasting memories of it kind of petering out into something less than it should be. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, we decided to, uh, with our friends here at Regular Music, get the uh, tour on sale now mm -hmm. so that uh, people who might want to come to more than one concert can get things sorted and book their tickets, book their travel, whatever. Yeah, come for the party. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the lovely thing about that is you're going to go out on a high, you're going to play some dates, we're going to detail Absolutely. what they are later, which is phenomenal. But also you're taking it back to the start, to the stage, to that energy, and that's never gone away. No, and, and already in, in my head I'm working on it as to how we'll do it because we'll be, it'll be an evening with, you know, and there'll be two, two sets. Mm -hmm. So I think we'll probably do the early years and then the later years which would be probably a good way to do it because there's tunes that we haven't played here yeah. in concert because there hasn't been the time. Okay. But when we've we've got the whole evening to ourselves, then we can add in things that have you know previously been left out of the uh, the menu. Okay, so this is it. So it's a sort of series of farewell evenings. Yeah. With the average yeah. white band. You've called the tour. Let's go round one last time, which is perfect. It's bittersweet as well, right? Sure is. I mean, we love being on stage. Love mm. playing. And um, we all really get on great, the guys in the band. Uh, it, it will be a, something that we'll miss, you know, the actual playing fact of it. Mm. What we won't miss now is all the travel and the headaches that <laughs> that, that has thrown up since COVID. Yeah, It quite. all changed completely. Mm. I mean, everything just became twice as hard to, to organise and to do. Um, everything from ground transport to flying to hotels. I mean, you name it, it's it's all much, much more difficult than it yeah. used to be. Yeah. But being on stage is... Um, it's a great high, it mm. really is. It is a perfect name for the tour because it also brings the band <laughs> full circle, doesn't it? It was kind it's, of obvious. Uh, yeah, it's over half a century since, since you formed. When you're on stage, do you meet the young men that you were back then, those who are here, those who are not? Is that something that you revisit? Does that energy come back every time you, you take to the stage? Yes, it does. Mm. And, you know, um, five of the guys in the band are slightly younger than us, uh -huh. so they bring their... Youth, more yeah. youthful energy mm. to the to the party all the time, and as as Ani said, you know, I want you to say, you know, let let everybody know our guys never phone it in. They yeah. bring it, they bring it all every night, mm. um, and they 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 play their bahookies off, you know. Yeah, I'll bet, and they'd probably be quite hard to come by, in as much as at the time when you first formed. Dare I say, half a century ago. I know. You know, you really were. You were musical revolutionaries. Your love for soul and R and B music blazed a trail here and in America. Was it a case of just meeting kindred spirits? Was that at the heart of your it, magic? Is that what's still yes, at the heart yes, of it? Yes, it, it was kindred spirits, all from um, from all over Scotland. I yeah. mean, we we were a pan Scottish band. We've got um, somebody from Montrose. We had somebody from Broughty Ferry. Yeah. One from Dundee. I'm from Perth. Mm. Draw a line across the country, and Hamish and Oni were from Glasgow. Glasgow area. So um, we, we kind of represented the whole country, but we all met up again in London. We mm. all knew each other in Scottish bands as being kingpins of, of those bands in Scotland. But we all met up again at the, at the uh, beginning of the 70s in London. And it was just a case of extricating people from the gigs they were in at that time mm. to put this, um, this dream band together. It really, really was. It's, it's such a, a, a huge 
and vast career in terms of the timing, but also in the geography of it and where you travel to and the people yeah. that you worked with. But you'll be feeling quite reflective, I would imagine, at the moment as well. Are there any identifiable standout moments for you, for the band, over that half century? Or does it all just blur into one rock and roll fever dream, Alan Gorey? No, no, there, there are some real standout things. Um, the first really amazing thing that happened to us was we were playing a, a Halloween concert in Los Angeles and um, as we started the encore, which at that time was, I heard it through the grapevine, oh, yeah. coming up the stairs was Mr Marvin Gaye. No. To join us on stage. <laughs> well, that's when your feet are three, three, three feet off the ground, you know. <laughs> Levitating. Levitating, <laughs> seriously. Um, quite amazing. And then... Um, Marvin forgot the second verse, so Hamish had to go and cue him. Oh, wow, really? <laughs> Here you go, Marv. So, Here you go, yeah. Uh, believe half of what you say, or something oh, like that, wow. in the second verse. But uh, that was one of the great standout moments. I mean, there have, there have been a lot, but that one sticks in the, in the memory. Mm, I can just see a couple of tweets coming in as we speak about people's memories of seeing the Average White Band uh, during the, the times. Charlie and Danoon says, I saw the Average White Band in Glasgow in the late 70s for the first time and for the last time at the concert hall. Superb every time. Pick up the pieces of one of the oh, finest great. funk tunes ever written. Thank Still you. gets me up to dance badly, says Charlie. Hey, right, <laughs> well, dancing's listen, like applause, Alan, right? He it's can't never bad. dance worse than I do. <laughs> It was the reason to join a band, so I wouldn't have to dance and make a fool of myself. <laughs> I, I felt I could make a, a better fool of myself on stage than on the floor. Oh, that's brilliant. It gets you off the hook. You're all right, and you're still part of the party. You are the party, in fact, even yes, better. Yes, hopefully. Uh, Doogie Fia, Sunny Leaf, loving the show, says, oh, I saw the average white band uh, with Benny King. Hi. Very nice. Usher yeah. Hall. Yeah. I mean, these venues as well. OK, let's get to the venues. So, the average white band, one last time going out on tour next year, celebrating everything you stand for. Shall I read out the dates or have you got them in front of you? I, I don't have them in front of me. Right. I know the places, but I can't remember the exact Sorry. dates. I've got them here. You can keep me right, though. OK, so 2024, Tuesday the 7th of May at Glasgow Royal Concert Hall, Wednesday the 8th of May at Aberdeen Music Hall, right. Friday the 10th of May at Perth Concert Hall and Saturday the 11th of May. The back at Edinburgh Usher, Usher Hall. Hall. Yeah. Yeah, speaking yeah. of Ben E. King, your hometown gig there, Perth. Yes, uh, uh, and it's a great concert hall, actually. It is, it's they, a brilliant they venue. They did a brilliant job on that one for some reason or other. They got it right, you know, which is not always the case. Yeah. Uh, good acoustics. Yeah. And um, and it, the reason that Jules Holland and people do it every year is because of the, the place. Is, it's got a good atmosphere and, and great sound, you know. Yeah. So, and it's obviously lovely to be in your hometown and have a, a, a finale there. Absolutely, that's so true. And these songs that clearly mean so much to so many people. Uh, we played the 1980 hit that gives the tour its uh, title earlier, Let's Go Round Again. What are your memories of, of that song coming to life? Do you remember actively writing it? Did you know you'd yeah, struck uh, musical well, goals? Well, I, I wrote it as a ballad. Right, uh, exactly okay. half the tempo it is really? on the record. Mm -hmm. And um, Steve Ferroni, our drummer, uh, we were mucking around with it. He said, um, "Steve said, wh wh why don't we? Why don't we? Let's try speeding it up. Put something really, you know, cracking a dance beat to it, and oh, well, let's try that." And and it it just worked. And um, I I I wrote the the melody specifically for Hamish and his vocal register. Mm. And it was just one of these. It was so easy to write. I don't know why it was. It was all kind of stream of unconsciousness, you know. It just all worked. But yeah, it worked. Yeah. It's also testament to the collaborative spirit of the it average is. white band as well, isn't it? You're yeah. open to ideas, yeah. but it's coming from a, a shared musical heart. That's right, and that's that's really important. Whether it's writing songs, recording, playing in concert, it, it's all collaborative, and it's it's having that great support around you. Mm. Um, it is teamwork. Everybody has their place, but they're willing to give it up here and there and uh, pass the ball, you know? Yeah, exactly. So these dates next year, a celebration of everything about the average white band, an evening with no less. Yep. <laughs> it must be. And then there's one evening without. <laughs> we get a day off. <laughs> <laughs> OK, well deserved as well. It's also a chance for the audiences and the fans, isn't it, to re-engage rather than you just going and they don't see you again. It's an acknowledgement that there's something that we can all share because it's such a collective experience, kind of yeah. like on stage and off stage. With well, that would be yourselves. cheating to, yeah. to not... Um, and as I say, you know... Not it's, to bow out. It's, yeah, bow out. But mm. um, there, there was a, a bit of, you know, should we, shouldn't we? It's a terrible thing to have to toss up in the air and somebody wrote a wonderful article about um, that quitting isn't 
a terrible thing. And if you're at the stage of having to toss a coin, you're already past the stage of you should have given it up. You know? Ah, OK. So I didn't yeah. ever want it to get to that stage. Mm. Let's be bold about it, put okay. it out there and uh, let people know that it, it will be a, a, a last hurrah, but, yeah, well, but a good one, you know. Yeah, plenty of hits. A few tears too, I would expect, on and off stage, oh, Alan. Well, I don't think so. No? I think it'll be all right. You think it'll be all right? Yeah. Well, dance your way through it. Well, we'll have a box of Kleenex on the bus. <laughs> Just in case. Well, listen, I can't wait. This is super exciting. Glasgow, Aberdeen, Perth and May. Uh, uh, and Edinburgh, that's next May. The Average White Band. Let's go round again one last time. Alan, it's a pleasure to see you again. Thank Likewise, you so much, Nicola. Thanks for having me. Oh, always a pleasure. And hey, I'm sure we'll talk nearer the time. I can't we wait shall. for it. We yes. I'll be crying, even if you're not, you know. <laughs> <laughs> OK, safe travels and we'll see you back here soon. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, the Average White Band are going to be heading out on the road in Scotland for one. One last time, May 2024. I'll just give you those venues one last time. Glasgow Royal Concert Hall, Aberdeen Music Hall, Perth Concert Hall and Edinburgh Usher Hall. Tickets for all of those dates go on sale this Friday. That's the 26th of May at 9am sharp.